So, dear uh, brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, we thank our Lord for giving uh, one more opportunity to discuss uh, his wonderful words of life uh, and uh, especially to meditate upon the Lord's uh, second coming. So, last uh, week, uh, we have clearly seen <clears throat> how the dates of the second coming is mentioned in the book of Daniel. So, today, we're going to just revise a few of the things that is mentioned in the book of Daniel and uh, you see and uh, continue today's class. So, last week uh, we have studied that how Daniel 12 chapter, it uh, actually mentions about uh, uh, three dates. So, in Daniel 12 chapter, we read about uh, verse 1 and verse 4, uh, where uh, actually uh, Daniel 12.1 uh, mentions about the Lord uh, Michael standing uh, in support for the people of Israel. And that is the time that there should be a great time of trouble, which was uh, not since the beginning of the world. And then verse 4, it tells uh, that uh, many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall increase. So there we have seen uh, how during the Lord's presence uh, that the knowledge shall increase and man shall run to and fro. But if you continue reading, it mentions in verse 10 and verse 7 about the abomination that make it desolate. And because of that abomination that make it desolate, <clears throat> you see, uh, the daily sacrifice uh, will be taken away. So since the taking away of the daily sacrifice and replacing it uh, with the abomination that make it desolate, uh, there the Bible gives us the uh, three dates. Uh, so the three dates uh, we have studied, uh, you see, it is actually, uh, you see, um, 1260 days uh, and 1290 uh, uh, days uh, and 1335 days. Uh. So we have seen how these uh, uh, dates uh, core, uh, relate to actually the second coming of Jesus. Uh. You see, the first uh, date uh, is actually uh, Daniel 12, 7, about 1260 days, uh, three and a half times. We have seen how... These uh, times uh, are all uh, the one and the same. You see, uh, uh, three and a half years means uh, 1,260 days. It also means 42 months. Uh, so everything is one and the same. So for a prophet, uh, you see, uh, one day means how many years? Who can tell? For a prophet, one day means how many years? Who can tell? Mm -hmm. One <laughs> one, one day for one year. Very good, very good, excellent. Correct. One day for a year. So, therefore, if it says 1260 days, it actually means 1260 years. So, when the Antichrist began, we saw in the period of Antichrist, it began in 539, where the first mass was conducted, where the three horns fell, you see, that is given in the book of uh, Daniel, you see, and uh, it is uh, since uh, that uh, time 539, 1260 has to be calculated. So, we will come to 1799. 1799, what happened? The end of the papacy system. Napoleon Bonaparte arrested the Pope and uh, he died in the jail. So, after this, there is one more date that is mentioned to us, you see, in uh, Daniel 1211, about 1290 days. So, again, we see uh, 1290 days from 539, you see, actually comes to 1829. So, in 1829, what happened? If you see, we see, uh, you see, the Miller's uh, movement uh, took place in 1829, where uh, Miller, William Miller claimed that 1844 Jesus will come literally and take everybody to heaven, you see, and establish his kingdom on earth. But unfortunately, nothing such a thing happened, uh, you see, in 1844. But Miller forget to study one more day that is mentioned in Daniel 12, chapter 12 verse. That is the 1335 days. <clears throat> so, 1335 days, it uh, actually uh, again starts with the same date, 539. So, 1335 you see, plus uh, 539 gives us to 1874. So, 1874 is the blessedness of that year when Jesus actually returned to the earth atmosphere to rule for a period of a uh, thousand years. You see, 
This is what we read in the parable of the wise and the foolish virgins. Uh, can somebody read Matthew 25, 6? Matthew 25, 6. Matthew 25, 5 and 6. Joel, brother, or uh, Roman sister? 5 and 6, brother. Five, 25th chapter, 5 and 6. Okay, brother. While the bridegroom, mm. bridegroom tarried, they all slumber and sleep. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. See? So, while the bridegroom uh, tarried, everybody slept. So, when the William Miller movement uh, did not fulfill, everybody began to sleep uh, spiritually. They went back to the world. But there was other cry in the midnight. Now, when does the midnight? Uh, you see, huh? what is the midnight? What is the time of the midnight? Midnight means what time? Midnight means what time? Midnight 12. Yes, 12 o'clock. So when does the day begin? When does the day actually begin? After. After? What? The 12 o'clock. Yes, correct, brother. So New Year, no? Everybody celebrate the New Year. As soon as tuck 12, 12, 12, 1 second also. They celebrate is a new year because that is the beginning of the new day. So similarly, see when was the call there? That was the midnight. So Jesus actually came in the midnight when the day changed. What is this day? When the 6,000 years ended and a 1,000 years started, that is the time that Jesus came. This is what we studied in Bible chronology. You see, the 6,000 years from the creation of Adam. You see, 6,000 years from the creation of Adam ended exactly, you see, when? In 1874. You see, correctly, you see, 1874, you see, 6,000 years ended. Since then, the reign of Christ has begun. So, midnight, the night of sin is over, a day began to start, but the sun has not begun to what? Rise in such a way that everybody can see. So, <clears throat> these are the clear proof of you see, uh, Jesus returned in what? Uh, 1874. Uh, uh, therefore, you see, last week uh, we studied about uh, all these things. Uh, you see, so uh, apart from uh, uh, these two proofs, uh, one is the book of Daniel, <clears throat> other is the Bible chronology. I think brother will take the Bible chronology to you in the coming classes, coming days also we'll see. So apart from this, uh, is there any date uh, where Jesus has mentioned about his second coming? Yes, Jesus has told about his second coming several times in the Bible. So, we are going to see it. He's mentioned about the time also. You see? But before that one, we need to understand that in one week, there are actually seven days. So, six days you are supposed to work and seven days you want to rest. You know the law that was given to people of Israel, the sabbatic law. You see, the six days they need to take uh, you see, work. And the seventh day, the sabbath day, they have to rest. Now, this uh, 6 plus 1, 7 days is actually a picture of God's plan. How? For Jesus, you tell me, huh? you see, huh? uh, one day means how many years for Jesus? For Jesus, one day means how many years? Huh? Any idea? Anybody? Jesus? For Jesus? Huh? Yes, for Jesus. Jesus. Thousand, brother. Thousand, brother. Mm. Very thousand good. Years. Years. Very good. Thousand years. So, seven days means what? Seven thousand years. See, whenever the Bible speaks about Jesus' reign, you see, Jesus' second coming, Jesus' establishment of his kingdom, the Bible speaks that that day is the last day. That day is his day. That day is the end. So let us read a few verses. Uh, John 7th chapter. 
second verse and john 7:37 uh mister can you read john 7 yes verse 2 brother. yes yes now the jewish feast of tabernacles was at hand ah see the feast of tabernacle was a one week feast so it says the feast of tabernacle was at hand no there what happened verse 37 sister ah <clears throat> In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. See, it says, in the last day, that great day of the feast. What do you mean by last day? After this one, there is no day at all. No, no, no. You know what is meaning by last day? You see, in a week, that was the last day. You see, and that was a great day of the feast. That was the Sabbath. You see, now also we use the term, no? but in a different way. Like how weekend, we say, correct now, weekend. Now, which is weekend? Uh? You see, weekend means what? Uh? Saturday, Sunday, that is called weekend. Correct now? Does it mean that there is no week after that one at all? No. That is the end of the particular week. So similarly, when the Bible says about the last day, that actually is a reference for the last seventh day in the, the 7,000 years. That means that is representing uh, uh, Jesus' thousand year. See, 6,000 years of sin, then comes the thousand year in of Christ. So total 7,000 years. So that can be divided into, you see, uh, seven days uh, in a week. Uh, so, seventh day was the Sabbath day for people of Israel. So, similarly, the seventh uh, thousand year is a uh, Sabbath. Uh, you see that uh, all mankind uh, will rest uh, in Christ uh, during his kingdom. So, it is in this last day that he is going to return. He is going to return for ruling a thousand years on this earth. It is during that period only, the resurrection of the church, the resurrection of the world and the judgment for the world will happen. John 6.44. Amar brother, can you read John 6.44? John 44. Hmm. No man can come to me except the Father which uh, hath sent me draw him and I will rise him up and the last day. Ah, see, I will rise him up the last day. Which is his last day? After this one, there is no day at all. No, no, no. The last day is his uh, thousand year reign. That is the last day. After this will come the glorious uh, peaceful kingdom on this earth. So that is the last day, you see, of a week. The last day, the seventh thousand year, that is the time. What will happen? Jesus' followers will be resurrected. The church will be resurrected. Okay, now read John 11, 24 also. Brother. Yes, brother. Yes. John 11, 24. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall uh, rise again in the resurrection at the last day. See, what will happen? Lazarus will be resurrected in the last day. Which is his last day? That is a reference again to the reign of Christ. is thousand years. Read John 12, 48 also, brother. John 12, 48. Okay, well, for that, hmm. he that rejected me and received not 
my word hath one that judge him the word that i have spoken the same shall judge him in the last day very good the same shall judge him in the last day you see so the last day means that is a reign of christ okay now just everybody please observe this chart you see you can see here um, one minute okay <clears throat> One minute, you brother. Uh huh. Okay. Are you able to see my mouse on the screen moving? Yes, brother. Yes, okay, brother. Good. See, see in this God's plan, this uh, seven thousand years is actually bifurcated into six thousand years of sin, and the last uh, seventh thousand year is a seventh uh, uh, thousand year where Jesus will reign for thousand years. You, you hope you all got it clearly. I'll explain to you again. I'll explain to you again. See, this 7,000 years is divided into two parts. First to 6,000 years of sin. And the last 1,000 mm -hmm. years is a reign of Christ. This last 1,000 year only, reference is given in the Bible, saying as the last day. Last day. Not that there is the last day of uh, any, everything. After this last 1,000 years, there's going to be years, ages to come. Okay. So this is what we read now. John 6, 44, John 11, 24, John 12, 28, 48, where it says last day, last day, last day. So last day is the reign of Christ. Read Isaiah 2, 2 also. <clears throat> Isaiah 2, 2. Anybody who can read? Joel brother, can you read? Joel. Isaiah 2, 2. <clears throat> And it shall come to pass in the last days oh. that the mountain of the Lord oh. house shall be established in the top of the mountains oh. and shall be exalted oh. above the hills and oh. all nations shall flow unto it. See, God's mountain, God's kingdom shall be established in the last day. This is a thousand year in a place. Okay, now we clearly understood. The 7,000 is divided into 6,000 plus 1,000 years. No, okay, good. Now, see, <clears throat> now it's more clear. 7,000 is actually 6,000 plus 1,000 years. Okay. This 1,000 uh, years only is called as the last day, you see, for Christ. That is the 1,000 years where he is going to rule on this earth. Okay. Now, <clears throat> When did Jesus come to this earth? If you see, Jesus came 4,128 years since the creation of Adam. Okay? See, from Adam, when Adam was created, since that time, you see, he came after 4,000 years. That means 4,128 years. So, Jesus came... You see, at 4,128 years. See, here you can see. Yeah? Correct, now. After 4,000 years, in the fifth uh, thousand year day, he came. See, 4,000 years uh, since uh, creation of Adam. Okay. Now, that was, you see, for Jesus. Since his first advent, that was his first day. Okay. And the next thousand years, since his first advent is the second day and the third thousand years, you see, that is the third day for our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Now, I'll repeat it again. Just please cleanly everybody observe. You see, uh, Jesus came on 4,128 years since the creation of Adam. That means... In the fifth thousand years, Jesus came to this earth at the first advent. And that 
in his sight was the first day. Okay? And from the first advent, you see, next one more thousand year is the second day. And uh, one more uh, thousand years after these two days uh, is the seventh day or it is the third day. You see, so Jesus referred to this uh, uh, first day, second day, third day several times in the Bible. So let us read John 2.19. John 2.19. Who can read? Joel, brother. Okay, brother. John 2.19. Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Okay, see, so Jesus said, destroy this temple and I will build this temple in three days. We all know very well that Jesus was not speaking of the literal building, the temple that is to be destroyed. Jesus was actually speaking about his body. So, who is his body? It is his church. Read verse 21, brother. <clears throat> but, the, but he spake of the temple of his body. Ah, he spoke about the temple of his body. Now, this body was supposed to be destroyed in the first and the second day. But what did Jesus say? In the third day, he will raise up his himself. That means in the resurrection, the church will come back on the third day, it seems. Sir. So the church will be resurrected on the third day. So which is his third day? Actually, Jesus is referring to. It is the third day since his first advent. See, you can see here. You see, Jesus came <clears throat> huh? 4,128 years since the creation of Adam. That was the first day. You see? And next 1,000 years comes the second day. And the third 1,000 years since his first advent, you see, is his reign. He, that is the third day. What Jesus is saying that in the 2000 years of the gospel age, you destroy the church, you persecute them and you kill them. But on the third day, when I will return, that would be my thousand years, you see. And it is that day that I will resurrect the church. Okay. Now, this is also a reference about the second coming of Jesus. So, Jesus told about his second advent there also. Okay. Let us read one more verse. Luke 13, 32. Luke 13, 32. Uh, Provister, can you read? Okay, brother. Uh, <clears throat> and he said unto them, Go ye and tell that fox, behold, I cast, cast out devils, and I do curse today and to morrow, uh, and the third day I shall be perfected. So what did Jesus say? Today and tomorrow I'll cast out devils. Third day he'll be perfected is himself. It's the same meaning. Though. Since Christ first advent, 2,000 years have passed. And he is going to return at the third thousand years since his first advent. So, in these two days, what is he doing? He is casting out the devil from where? From the true church who are living in the world, uh, stuck in the clutches of the sin, death and Satan. Jesus is calling us to the truth and casting out devil from us. But a third day, that is since 1874, his body, his church shall be perfected. See, Jesus is again telling about the second advent. Let us read one more verse in Osea 6 chapter 1, 2 and 3. Osea 6 chapter verse 1, 2 and 3. <clears throat> uh, Romister, can you read? Okay. 
Okay, brother. Awesome. Verse one, come and let us let us return unto the Lord, for He hath torn, and He will heal us. He hath smitten, and and He will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. In the third day, he will uh, raise us up and we shall live in his sight. Then you, shall we know, shall okay. we know, okay, okay. Sir. Thank you, thank you, sir. So, yeah, actually speaking about the nation of Israel, that uh, God shall... Uh, you see, scatter the nation of Israel, you see, and punish them, uh, you see. Uh, but uh, again, it says, uh, they shall be healed in one or two days, uh, that is on the third day. So, we have studied about the class of Israel, how Israel were punished uh, since Christ first advent for the 2000 years. And it is in the third 1000 years, that is since 1874 only, that Israel is being blessed. So, this is also... One of the clear signs that Jesus had mentioned about second coming. Okay. Now, there is one more sign which actually Jesus mentions. That is in book of Luke. One minute, I'll tell you. Luke 12 chapter. Verse... Uh, 36 to 38. Luke 12 chapter, verse 36 to 38. Joel, brother, can you read? And ye yourself like unto men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knock, uh, they, they may open unto him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching verily. I say unto you, that he shall greet himself, and make them to sit down to meet, and will come forth and serve them. 38 also, brother. And if he shall come in the second watch, or Come in the third words and find them so blessed are those servants. See, here again it's mentioning about Jesus' second coming, where it says, And you yourselves like unto men that wait for the Lord. When he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. So we should be, the church should be like a you see, the servant who is waiting for the Lord's second uh, advent. Uh, and it says, verse uh, 37, Blessed are the servants uh, whom when the Lord cometh, uh, find so doing. That means, when the Lord uh, has returned uh, in 1874, you see, there are few people who are awake and alert, waiting and watching for the Lord's uh, second advent. Uh, Coming and that is the time he says they are the blessed ones. What are the blessed ones? Sir? What is the meaning of the blessed one? Jesus will gird himself, you see, and serve them with food, it seems. Therefore, you see, what all things we are studying, what all things we are reading, you see, this is the meat from the Lord who is giving us meat in due season. So Jesus has returned. And who is faithful at his second advent, Jesus is preparing the food and giving to the church. Now, when will the, the master or the Lord return? Verse 38 gives us a clue that if he shall come in the second watch or the third watch, you see, blessed are those servants. So when will Jesus return? So Jesus gave a clue that Jesus will return in the second or the third watch. It is the same, you see. Meaning of what we have studied, uh, second or the third day, 
you see uh, my body will be perfected today tomorrow i'll cast out devils third day i'll be perfected so same meaning third watch will come now what is the meaning of watch you see watch in the bible means thousand years read psalms 90 verse 4 uh Joel brother, can you read Psalms 90, 90 verse 4? Psalms 90 verses hmm. 4. 19 or 90 brother? 90. Okay. Verse 4. For a thousand years in thy side are but as yesterday when it is past and as a watch in the night ah watch in the night this is the watch thousand years jesus said i might come in uh, two thousand years or three thousand years that's what jesus said the dear brethren why why did not jesus exactly give us the date because jesus had not proved his faithfulness to god by dying on the cross so until such time God had not revealed the days and seasons to him. Hence, what did Jesus say when he was uh, on the earth? Uh, that day and that hour, no man knows uh, except my father in heaven. But after Jesus proving his faithfulness, God revealed everything to him. But he knew vaguely that when he is supposed to return back. Uh, hence, uh, you say Jesus knew that he has to suffer now. He has to give sacrifice, then go to heaven receive the kingdom, receive the reward and come back again at the second event and rule on this earth for a thousand years. Therefore, Jesus knew that vaguely when he is going to return. You see, now uh, uh, read Revelation 22. Amar brother, read Revelation 22 uh, verse 20. Revelation chapter 22 verse 20 brother. Okay, Revelation 22, 20 verse. He which uh, testified these things said, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so come Lord Jesus. See, what did Jesus say? At last, I come quickly. Now, Jesus uh, is coming uh, after 2000 years from his first advent. Is it quickly? No. Somebody who comes after 2000 is quickly. Yeah. No, not at all. But why did Jesus say that I come quickly? No, mm, I'll give you an example. Now, you see, Lulia is there. Imagine if Brother Amar is going somewhere outside, huh? uh, very far for a travel. You see, he won't be there in the house. Will uh, Le Lulia uh, leave him to go out? Probably she may tell, no, no. I will also come, I will also come, I will also come with you. Until you take me, I won't leave you at all. So that time, you see, Amar brother might tell, oh, don't worry, I'll come very soon. Come very soon means what? Come very soon means what? I'll just go like this and return back. This is what actually Jesus said to the disciples. You see, I will return very soon. You see, probably... Amar brother may say, only one or two days, I'll return fast. You see, just I'll go like this and come very fast. So similarly, Jesus said, in two, three days, I will return back. And that two, three days is two, three days for him. But for the church, it is two, three thousand years. So Jesus was actually saying, from today, in two, three days, I will return back. But for us, since the first advent of Jesus, it is after 2000 years that Jesus has returned in the third thousand years. That is since 1874. And Jesus said, Behold, I come very quickly in two, three days. Got it? So, dear brethren, so these are the clear proof for our Lord's uh, second advent. Uh, now Jesus returned, you see, in 1874. Okay. Now, we almost covered each and every part of the second coming. 
there's only one last part that is about a rapture uh, i'm sure the time is not sufficient we will see god willing in the coming days uh, when we can cover about the rapture okay uh, but we'll be sharing the notes so, so a lot of things are there in the pdf you can go through the pdf also in the meantime if uh, anybody has got any questions any doubts you can ask if you if you did not understand anything you want more clarification you are free to discuss with us especially by joel amar brother and uh, sister uh, romi anything you want to ask though it may be the date of second coming anything you can please ask actually we discussed on last saturday so most of the thing uh, brother asses he have uh, shared and uh, so it's all satisfied answer so uh, i don't have any further question thank you good good sister what about the date sister you are convinced about 1874 yes and uh, um, about the abominations so um there was a i was not able to understand that so he clearly um explain everything so i understood it now okay so i would like to share my thoughts about how uh, i understood about abomination so i was also very much uh, uh, is perplexed uh, when somebody mentioned about abomination what is this abomination that make it desolate i'll give you example imagine you see i invite all of you to my house okay and uh, make you all sit for dinner okay you are you are all having good meal your stomach is full you are all you are all full you can't have anything imagine if i come and give more food for you just uh, so much so much food your favorite food so much so much food in front of each and everybody i keep it and tell you have to eat or else i want uh, i leave you you have to compulsory eat if i compel you to eat how it will be it will be very repulsive you won't feel like eating you feel as if you see that everything will come out what all you have ate correct no that is the meaning of the word abomination abomination means the something which god dislikes see god expected sacrifices until jesus came but once jesus came and sacrificed himself on the cross that was end of all the sacrifices since then there is no other sacrifice god accepts at all god doesn't accept any sacrifice you see and nothing can replace the sacrifice of christ so even after christ sacrificing people keep on giving sacrifices to please the lord that is abomination in god's sight this is what the people of israel did they never accepted jesus as the messiah so keep on repeated the same sacrifice again and again again and again and so what happened god's presence moved out from the shekina from the most holy place there was no shekina glory and what happened romans were allowed to destroy the temple it is the same thing with the christians today you see once christ is sacrificed and dead for us there is no need for us to repeat that sacrifices communion you see every week every month that's not to be done you see that's not a literal body that's not a literal blood of christ but that was just a symbol to remember only is dead and that has to be done only once a year but instead of doing it once a year if you keep on repeating it daily that means you are taking that daily value of jesus sacrifice and you are making it abomination you see so that is you see the meaning of abomination that make it desolate desolate means what you see god pushes away you see because of the abomination like for example adam sinned that was abomination in the sight of god so he was made desolate he was cast away from his presence that's the meaning abomination that make it desolate so 
Uh, I hope it's still more uh, useful for you. So I hope it's uh, clear to you also. Yes, brother. Okay, Amar brother, any doubts, any questions? Mm -hmm. No, brother. Okay, Joel brother. No question, brother. Okay, uh, Romy sir, anything else? No, brother. Okay, any other subject you have? Any doubts? Anyone? Um, yes, uh, Ramishter. No questions, brother. It's just like um, <laughs> um, it taking us time to um. Uh, understand it properly as everything has been uh, new and all but I have been listening to the audios that you sent and um, slowly started to go through the PDF as well so um, for now I, we don't really have questions and out if we have, we will ask you. Okay, okay. Thank you, Mr. Good. So, main thing you need to understand is that uh, as we are listening to the basic class, uh, we won't be able to understand everything 100% like uh, what I have understood. Okay, not even like what Dr. Gopal or Dr. Ashish has understood. Why? Because uh, that's my experience. I want to share my experience with you also. I, I'm, I'm sure. See, that's the experience of each and every person who is listening first time to the truth. As you keep on listening to the truth, each and every class is a new, 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 new thing. So as the new things come into our mind, we, we, are, we are not able to grasp it or what do you say? We are not able to remember each and everything in our mind. But the concept we are able to understand. That is the main thing. See, uh, you can't intricately understand each and every point. If I tell you to explain each and every point, if I tell you to answer each and every question, definitely you won't be able to do. That's not a thing to worry at all. Because understanding the concept of it is very, very important. Like I say, when second coming, understanding the concept means how Jesus is going to return. He is going to return invisibly as a spiritual being a divine nature and church is going to rule with him invisibly that's sufficient so when he returned he returned in 1874 so we are living in this parousia these concepts if you understand that's that's sufficient because as your days goes on as you as you consecrate god gives us more of the holy spirit confirms the holy spirit then your eyes will be enlightened that is the time that actually your eyes of understanding will be really opened and you will be able to grasp each and everything in very, very clear, clear manner. So, it will take time. So, no need to worry. Okay. See, uh, that is the experience of each and every brethren who are listening to the truth. So, we always tell, we say, keep on listening to the truth. So, keep on listening to the recordings. So, you are blessed with the notes also. You see, with the, in, during our days, there was no notes. We used to make our own notes. Okay, and we used to update it and we used to study it. God has given the wonderful opportunity where brother is sharing the notes in the local language in English. So make use of it. Any questions you have, let it be. Don't hesitate. You're, you're free to ask because we are always free to discussion. So, uh, God willing, from next week, uh, we'll start uh, uh, new classes. Okay, so second coming is over here. So we'll see when we can uh, take up the rapture. I'm sure you're not uh, so much uh, keen to know or uh, you have so much of keen uh, questions uh, about rapture. So, God willing, we'll see all those things in the coming days. So, good. So, main thing is that uh, it's only after your uh, uh, understanding is open that you will be able to remember everything. Like, for example, even the apostles. Apostles were with Jesus. But did they understand everything intricately? No. Then they just follow the Christ. They just follow the Lord. Okay. 
But they did not follow in hypocrisy. They were very sincere, very dedicated. Okay, they thought that uh, the kingdom is going to be established, going to be rulers. Uh, they never thought that about uh, heavenly salvation, all this concept and all. Uh, they just follow the Lord uh, with a hope and the sincere act. But when did they really understand? Uh, Jesus clearly said, uh, now we won't understand anything, but don't worry. If I go, I will send you the Holy Spirit. Uh, they, he shall lead you into all truth. That's what happened on the day of Pentecost. You see, the Holy Spirit was poured upon them. Peter was the first one to preach. Imagine, Peter was the first one to reject Christ and run very far from him. But he was the first one to preach. How did he understand so many scriptures? He quoted from the book of Joel. He quoted from the book of Psalms and explained all these things that are relating to Jesus. How suddenly these things happened? It's not a magic. This is God's power of the Holy Spirit. And you will all get uh, that power of the Holy Spirit after your consecration. Okay? Not that you don't have the Holy Spirit. Now, what Holy Spirit you have, that will be increased in immense measure after somebody's consecration. Your eyes will be enlightened. You can really understand more and more. But you can expound it to others also. Okay? So, regarding these things, I think Brother uh, uh, Joel, sorry, sorry, Brother Gopal and Brother Ashish will... Uh, I explain more to you in the coming days, sir. Okay. Uh, anybody, any questions, any doubts? Anyone, anything you want to discuss? Or we shall be close with a word of prayer. Okay. We'll close with a word of prayer. Anybody wants to tell anything? Let's close, brother. Okay. Okay, then Joel, brother, can you pray? Okay, brother, let's pray. Hallelujah, Tobe Sorbos of the Man Permissor Vuela, your Samaikun empty Piri when I am in Tapala Doneva, Bandazo, the Seritope Gazo Botson, I'm Lerium, and a Jotipani, I'm Lisunekos Hom Pro, Tikuraru, Yad Gornogalagi, and a Saita Gornos, Ozipani, I'm Rosamo Sakti, Kakura, Ruprobu, Topili Kolidino Boykos, Agamidin or Matopeko Botson or Rojapani, or the song, Tikura, Matsepro, Tope Boytinus, Razako Samaima Tope, Surutiki on Dim Samo, Tope, I'm Rosatma Boytin Boykalagi, Doneva, Bandazo. अब हामी स्टमबाट छुट्ने छौ तपाई प्रत्येकको साथ भई दिनुस् धन्यवाद छ सबै कुरा तपाईलाई महिमा प्रशंसा यस वचन सुनाइ द्वारा बुझाइ द्वारा प्रभु तपाईलाई महिमा भएको होस् धन्यवाद छ यीशु प्रभुको नाममा आमेन 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 थ्यांक यू लॉर्ड ब्लेस गुड नाइट